The water will walk Kadash. The water, Kai. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All praises to Ahaya Kisad. That's all praises to Anoki said. That's all praises to the great I am loving kindness. Bahashim Yeshaya. Bahashim Moza the Lamb. In the name of the Messiah, the Hamasiak, Shalawam family. This is little son Sabal Nabaya. And family, today we are here to talk about why a woman must go through her cycle. So family, I have heard Christian pastors when trying to explain the spiritual reason why women have their monthly cycle, why women get their periods. I have heard these pastors go straight they go straight to the Garden of Eden, which they should, I'll, I'll give them that. But they go straight to the Garden of Eden and they say, oh, it's the curse. That's her punishment. That's the women's punishment for, for, for the sin. Because it's connected to her childbirth. So that's the place they go to. They go to a place of condemnation and shame but how many of you know that there is there are consequences for our actions and rather than thinking of consequences as curses why don't we just take responsibility and understand that sometimes a thing happens because of a choice that you made. And it doesn't always have to be a curse. And it doesn't have to be a punishment. Understand, family, that sometimes if you walk in the water, you get wet. And if you choose to believe that getting wet is a curse... Well, that's on you. So let's go ahead and get into this subject. I thought it was appropriate to do it using the moon. We got the moon actually setting tonight. We'll probably run out of time, but I'll just loop the video. So I thought it was appropriate to use the moon for this imagery because lots of Native Americans these women refer to their time of the month as their moon time. So let's talk about this subject. Let's get into the reason, especially the spiritual reason for moon time, for a woman's monthly cycle. And family, we're going to take it back all the way back to Adam and Eve in order to get the proper understanding. So family, let's think about this for a moment. I want you to think about, I want you to think about the way that we talked last time in this deeper understandings thing that we have going on. We talked about how man, we talked about how man and what his righteous definition is, is that man is the accumulation of the definition of all element. So we understand that that's what Adam did. Adam, what Adam did was he named everything. He defined everything. He was naming everything in that way. Remember, your name is your character. So Adam was letting things know their reason. You understand? He was defining them. But Eve, women, women are the accumulation 
of the feelings in our element. So understand that what Eve was doing, Eve was helping to join everything in their relationships with one another. You understand? What women do is they're able to help join things. Women are joiners. So now, family, now that we have refreshed ourselves on the role of men and women, now we can think about what happened. So when our first parents sinned, the relationships started to change between certain things. In other words, things are not the way now that they were in Eden relationship wise. You understand we talked last time about the wind, about how the wind didn't blow until after the sin came. So now what I want you to think about family is that there were other things that were affected by that. Understand that when you read in the Bible about what it's going to be like in the millennium when the world goes back into a, a, a um, what do you call it? When the world goes back into a state that is a state that is back where we are dealing with, with um, Eden. When the world goes back into an Eden state. Now we talk about the, the lamb and the lion being together. In other words, the animals aren't going to have to eat one another anymore. That was one of the relationships that changed because of the sins of men. So that's how things work. So now let's talk about a woman. Because a woman is the accumulation of all the feelings that are in element. And because after the object of creation that is man, after we sinned and these relationships started to change, the woman feels that. She feels those changes. And then you have the Decadarchi. The Decadarchi, remember, they were a part of creation. Remember, there were holy watchers. Let's stop while this car passes by so I'm not competing with the sound of the car. Okay. And the car has passed by. So the, 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 the holy watchers were all here. There were watchers in the beginning. And then we understand that Satan, he failed. He was a meteorite. And then he began, he began to give line visions to everything else. And those that hearkened unto him and listened to him, they followed him down into the pit. And so we understand that these things became the Decadarchi. So these are the angels that left their first estate. They were watchers and now they're the fallen watchers. So we have talked about the Decadarchi before. Things like copper. Things like generated electricity and so on and so forth. We're not going through all of the Decadarchi right now, but I am mentioning them right now because I want you to understand that these things are now in the natural world. Things like aluminum. Aluminum is another fallen watcher. So now that creation has changed. Now that creation is in a different state because of man. It's in a temporal state. Well, even in the temporal state, man and woman, we are still the object of creation. Creation was still made for us, but because of the sin, now we have to experience this temporal world. So now the woman who is a joiner, who feels so deeply, she's the accumulation of all of the feelings, understand what's going on now. The woman is actually now having to deal with, she's having to deal with the, the, the temporal state of these things, and she's feeling that and taking that into her. 
both the clean and the unclean things she is experiencing. And because women are like receivers and they take everything into themselves, well, spiritually, that has an effect. So now the woman, because, of course, she needs to remain clean, she has to expel that every so often. So I understand the science of it all and how they say, oh, well, it has to do with ovulation and all of that. Oh, that's great. Understand this. Spiritually, there is a reason for everything. And understand that the spiritual reason is more important than everything else that we're dealing with. So you got to look at the spiritual first, because when you look at the spiritual first, then you can see how the physical manifest. So now, family, you should have a better understanding of why women have a monthly cycle. You have a better understanding of why women deal with this thing from month to month. It is just a natural process because of how they are made, because the women understand what women are doing is they are taking everything in. Remember, women are like receivers and men are like emitters. Do you understand? And so that's the natural way that we are. We're set up that way, like uh, the example of a light socket and a, a plug in. The man would be the plug in, but the part in the wall, that's the woman. She's going to receive that plug to go in there. And you guys can draw all the analogies and metaphors and everything that you want to draw. But you understand what I'm trying to say. Women receive. They deal with the present moment. You understand? So they're always open and feeling all of that coming in. This is why women are so important um, when it comes to things like intuition. Because women are feeling that present moment and their antennas are up. So listen to your women when they say things like, hold on, something's not right. Hey, hearken unto that. Listen to that. You understand? You'll get a lot farther if you just take heed. And we're going to stop for one second, family. Just because uh, another car is passing by and I want to make sure that I'm not competing with the traffic noises. I hear them. They're, they're right behind me. They're coming. Hold on one moment. Okay. One car, two cars. Okay, family. But family, that is pretty much it. Wasn't a very long, drawn-out thing we had to talk about. Family, I pray that y'all were edified by this today. Again, this is the second installment in the Deeper Understandings series that we have going on where we're not going through a whole bunch of scripture, but we're simply talking. We're simply talking about those deeper things, things that I have set up and I have pondered and I have felt with the Holy Spirit about and the understandings that I've gotten after I have studied scripture and then listened to feel the spirit and learn the truth and the true nature of things. Once again, family, if you have any questions about where you can find some of the things that I mention or talk about, put them in the comments and I'll tell you where you can go in the books to find these things. And um, also, you can always email me at qualm, cry aloud, spare not at gmail.com. Family, I pray that y'all were edified today. And remember that I love each and every one of you. The water, Kai. All praises to Anoki said, Bahashim Motsa, the Lamb. This is Little Son Sabal Nabaya saying, Much love and much shalom.